and not knowing like how severe it's gonna get or what the effects might look like on someone like me. I think it's like expected that adoptees are maybe like closed off and don't wanna trust anyone. Honestly, this is like the most I've ever talked about my adoption. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Leah, and I would love if you would hit that subscribe button down below and also turn on the bell for post notifications. Today we are in the car again, and I decided it would be a great opportunity to finally do the adoptee tag. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Today I'm going to the Apple store. We've got the computer back here. Basically, long story short, my mom tried to restore it, and I wasn't there for like the beginning steps. We ended up calling Apple, and they were like, yeah, you need to take that in. So that's what we're doing. I hope you guys enjoy this video, so let's get into it once I back out of the driveway. So I was adopted from Guangzhou, China. I live in a city that is right outside Boston, so came a long way. And I was nine months when I was adopted. For me, I only tell people I'm adopted, like if they ask, after seeing a picture of my family, and they're like, mm, something's not right here. Like, what's good? I am very interested in the Chinese culture. Right now I'm taking a class with my college online for the summer and it's called Buddhism and the Brain. So it's kind of like how the Buddhist religion affects our brains, I think. I don't know. But I'm loving it so far and it's so interesting. I mean, I know Buddhism isn't like China definitively, but just being able to learn about that aspect of a culture is really cool. I don't know. I would love to learn more about the Chinese culture though because I think it's so beautiful and definitely underappreciated. I have not, well actually, I went back when I was two years old to get my sister when we adopted her, but I haven't been back since. But I would love to go there. I would seriously love to go back to China. Unfortunately, I don't. I kind of wish I did, but like there's no like place for me to even learn the language, honestly. For me, I guess it's kind of normal. I didn't feel like alienated at all. I think mainly because I grew up in such a diverse city. So I wasn't like the only Asian in a suburban, largely white population, if that makes any sense. My high school, honestly, the minority is white people. I guess as a, a Chinese individual, I didn't feel like ostracized or anything. I guess it was just interesting because my peers knew who my mom was. Everyone kind of found out I was adopted like as soon as they saw who my mom was or put the dots together. And the reason why they knew who my mom was is because she was a school nurse at my elementary middle school. Whenever they would go see Nurse Patty, they would see like her title, like her name on her desk and it would say like her last name. And then they knew my last name so they kind of put two and two together. But some people honestly like didn't know I was adopted till like way into high school. And then they were like, oh, we just assumed your dad was like Chinese or something. I've done Ancestry.com and 23andMe, but not exactly to find my birth parents. I was more interested in knowing what I was made up of and finding out my ethnicity. Both of them really didn't give me much in terms of relatives. Like all it told me was like fifth and sixth cousins and stuff, which is still pretty remarkable. Like the fact that they can do that. I'm just glad my name's in the system and my DNA's in the system. So in case something ever popped, I always used to like, there was like this running joke that I was like a banana, yellow on the outside, white on the inside. It's a terrible joke, but it's so true. My outside, like I'm Chinese, but on the inside, like I was raised like American. So I guess that's how I would answer that. I know a good amount of adoptees. When I was adopted, my parents kept in touch with two other families that they were adopting that were from the same orphanage. So we're all the same age and we still keep in touch. Um, so shout out to Lily and Kim if y'all are watching this. A couple people from my high school were adopted and even in college I know like maybe about three or four people that are adopted which is really cool. I guess one thing that comes to mind is when it comes to family pictures and a lot of people can look at old photos of family members and stuff and be like, oh, I got my nose from Uncle Bob. But for like adoptees, you're in these photos but you can't, you're not able to physically identify with anyone. So I guess that's something that's really interesting. Another one that comes to mind is like medically. Um, for me, this plays into my life 
significantly. I've said this in my doorstep poem, but I have Marfan syndrome. That is a genetic disorder and it affects the tissues in your body, like your lungs and your heart and your eyes and like your joints and stuff like that. And so that is hereditary. But for me, I have no idea if my birth mother had it or my birth father, or maybe if I'm the first one to have it of my family, I don't know. That's something that really played into my life a lot and not knowing like how severe it's gonna get or what the effects might look like on someone like me. If that, I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, I don't know where the Apple store is. I'm here, but I don't know where I'm going, so I'm just gonna follow all the cars and just hope for the best. Um, it's also 1.30, so I have plenty of time. So we'll just drive around the parking lot while I finish the tag. So I guess medically as well, that's something that played in. And like filling out forms, it's like, do you have any history of having heart disease or diabetes and stuff like that? And I just have to write NA because I truly don't know. Oh my God, there it is. Oh my, oh wow, what are the odds? Okay, now I just have to find a parking space. <laughs> Sorry guys, okay. Oh, this guy took a nice parking space. I don't wanna park too far away because I have to carry that computer. <gasps> Here's a parking space, God bless. Do you think being adopted has affected your relationships slash trust? And I definitely think it has. Ah, my phone! For me, I think not in a way that many people would expect. I think it's like expected that adoptees are maybe like closed off and don't wanna trust anyone. But for me, I'm like the complete opposite. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the internet right now for crying out loud, but um, for me, like, I think the way that adoption has affected my sense of trust in relationships is that I wear my heart on my sleeve. I will trust anyone in hopes of them staying in my life, if that makes any sense. Because for me, impermanence has been so constant in my life, which is very ironic. Like, it literally started from, like, day one. Like, the fact that my birth mother slash father, like, is not present in my life. I guess that's how I would answer that. I think it's just affected my trust in in a way that like I want to trust everyone in hopes that someone or something will stick. I think I said this earlier, but yes, I do. I have a sister who's three years younger than me and she is adopted as well, but just from a different um, province. I would say that my relationship with my adoptive parents is, you know, normal, like as it can be. I think like we're very open when it comes to talking about adoption. I don't really think of them like, oh, they're my adoptive parents. I kind of think of it like, there's my mom and dad, you know? If I had the chance to meet my birth parents, I think I just wanna know why. I'm really interested in knowing like what circumstances brought them to the conclusion of putting me up for adoption or just abandoning me in general. I don't think I would change a thing. I'm so grateful for the life I have as a result of being adopted. I probably wouldn't be sitting here filming this if, you know, if I wasn't. I'm just such a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't change a thing. I would definitely adopt um, a kid myself, but kind of like only if the circumstances arose. I really would love to have my own kid though. Just the idea of having someone in the world that is blood related to you that you can hold and that you know that's just so beautiful to me and I really want that. If for some reason I wasn't able to have my own kid or just something happened, then I would hands down adopt. And then the final question is, apart from being adopted, how else do you identify? I thought this was such a good question when I first read it, but now I can't even think of an answer for it. So I guess apart from being adopted, the way I would identify myself is, you know, I'm a student, um, I go to college, I have a passion for filmmaking and editing and all things related to a camera. I love to travel and that's all I want to do when I get older and have the means. And I just have like a burning passion for learning and experiencing different people and cultures. So I guess that's how I would identify myself. All right, I think that's the end of the video. Wow. Major shout out to this girl named Naomi who has a channel titled The Here and Now. She makes videos on adoption and what it's like to be a Chinese adoptee. And she created this tag. So you guys should go check out her channel if you haven't heard of her. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I know it's a bit different than usual, but I kind of wanted to share my insight on what it's like to be adopted. I also plan on making a couple more adopted oriented videos in the future and just kind of sprinkling them along this summer. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Honestly, this is like the most I've ever talked about my adoption. Make sure you follow me on all my social media. The links will all be in the description below. I will also link Naomi's video and her channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.